Hi, welcome back everyone. And um, this is the hour, half an hour we've been waiting for, which is to round out our conference with a conversation with uh, Governor Newsom. Uh, I hardly have to introduce him, but I, I will remind everyone that he is uh, a longtime leader here in the Bay Area and in the state of California with a really strong track record of innovation, uh, which is the theme of our conference today, to tackle some of the most challenging social issues in our state from uh, delivering uh, universal access to health care, climate change, homelessness, to criminal justice reform, and um, minimum wage. Now, and now we can add to his list um, the commander in chief of a global pandemic. <laughs> and uh, from my seat, I will tell you that uh, leading COVID on behalf of Kaiser's you know, 12 million members across the country, uh, we have really much to be grateful for here in the state of California. So I was gonna share three kind of behind the scenes things um, with you about the governor's leadership. First was that, he completely redeployed his entire inner circle, governor, ops group, to lead the state's pandemic response, uh, reporting to him directly. I was so impressed. Um, and that he was very hands-on in a way that we needed to during the really dark, confusing, uncertain days. And he's extremely visible. One of his favorite things was to just kind of pop by um, facilities and mass vaccination sites. And I will tell you that people just loved it, that he showed up and he was there talking to our staff and, um, and just the people um, in, our, in, in our state. And so that is what you want um, our leader to be doing. Second thing was that there was unprecedented collaboration across 65 um, local county public health departments. And for those of you who do not know, they have a mind of their own. <laughs> and it was, I can't tell you um, in the kindest way how extraordinarily messy it was all uh, until his office really said, hey, this is bigger than any one county. Um, and uh, we need to act together um, to um, save lives and um, support our, our families. And the last thing is that, you know, he, uh, his administration was really engaged with private sector, just business experts, healthcare experts, civic leaders, labor leaders, you know, and he consulted with everyone, he and his team to develop the needed emergency waivers and, you know, directing resources and money. And so, all of this happened under his watch and we really working with so many other states across the country we we were so fortunate um, to have his leadership during this this time so thank you um governor i'm so excited to be able to personally thank you for your leadership lives are saved um i think because of your intervention and your leadership and now um you know we want to turn our attention to uh how do we help uh ensure that we're directing the California economy and the business climate in a way that feels just as successful. So we have a few questions for you today that have come from the Barry Council members and uh, really consistent with our topics today. So ready, ready to go? Ready to jump in? Thank okay. you. And thanks for your kind words, Janet. Appreciate it. It's, and it's wonderful everybody to be here virtually. Look forward to seeing you all in person again, but thank you for this opportunity. Great. Okay, so we all as business leaders have a lot of lessons that we learned along the last 14 months. And I think one of the biggest things was just how agile we all had to become and rethink innovative solutions in the space of a kind of crisis. Um, and a lot of us now are reflecting, you know, what could we have done better um, looking in the rearview mirror? So kind of curious from your perspective, Governor, what, what are you most proud of that we were able to do during this time? And how do you see it maybe helping us strengthen how we respond to future emergencies in the state? No, Mary, your, your point's right on. We're, we're not only experts, we're all geniuses in hindsight. And so we'll have the chance to, to really adjudicate uh, once the dust is fully settled, and I want to be mindful the dust is not settled on this pandemic, quite the contrary. But look, I, I think the most important, impactful thing we did and had an impact not only here in the state of California or import, but also uh, around the rest of the nation was advancing the first stay-at-home order in the country. Of course, the Bay Area leading Los Angeles, uh, epicenter of so much of the stress, uh, leading the state. Uh, moving with a health-centric approach, not ideological open argument interested in evidence. Uh, we took that scientific-based approach um, and that wasn't, you know, wasn't universally well received. It goes without saying, uh, but it was stubborn. Facts are stubborn. And I think the facts have bared 
uh, fruit to that strategy. Let's just be specific. Uh, the state of California not only outperformed states like Florida and Texas, Indiana, the United States as a whole in terms of health outcomes, but we also outperformed in economic outcomes. And I think this is an incredibly important point. It's what brings us here together. The Bay Area Council is focusing on economic and workforce development to, to remind everybody that the state of California saw contraction in its economy that was more modest in states like Florida and Texas, which seem to be so contemporary in terms of the consternation and focus, particularly with so many journalists across the spectrum as it relates to California's uh, latest iteration of its crack up or demise or its best days being behind it. Accordingly, and wasn't surprising as a consequence of those strategies that UCLA and their economic forecasts, which we all look forward to on an annual basis, made not only that point, but reinforced the point that many of us have been making as a consequence, the state is better positioned for a big and bigger comeback. And you've seen that reflected in just the last four months, just consider in February, 41% of America's jobs, 41% of America's jobs came out of the state of California. You've seen now four consecutive months of job growth north of 100,000, 495,000, just 500,000 jobs. There is no American recovery without a California recovery. Close to 500,000 jobs just in the last four months. We truly are the tentpole of the American economy's recovery. And so we talk in terms, and I'll, I won't belabor the response, but we talk in terms of California's comeback as California coming roaring back. And you're seeing that particularly in the sector most impacted by those early stay at home orders. And that's obviously leisure hospitality and the food sectors that are really driving uh, those economic numbers in terms of job creation. A lot of work to do. I'm not naive about that. But I'm also very pleased and proud of the work that was done with those 60 plus local health officers, as you note, uh, Janet, up and down the state that rode by and large in the same direction, which is remarkable when you consider how large the state of California is 40 million strong. Yeah, no, I, it's great to hear your optimism. And, and I think a lot of us are feeling that too. We can't help it, you know, with uh, everything coming back. But there's still, um, you know, before the pandemic, you know, the business climate was getting challenging and we had homelessness and we had taxes and, um, and you know, certainly now post pandemic, those, some of those same issues are still with us. They didn't go away because of the pandemic. And so, so what does it look like if we're you know, rowing all together, as you said, if it's business and it's labor and it's the legislature and, and your office, what, is it, what does that look like if we're rowing but, together? So let me, I'll get to the more sober and, and, and challenging point you made, which is absolutely spot on as it relates to our pre-existing conditions pre-pandemic. But it's also important to remind people where we were 16 months ago, we dominated. Talk about the tentpole of the American economy, 3.9% average GDP growth, average over a five-year period. Again, significantly outperforming those states that get so much attention on some of these news networks. California was also enjoying record job creation, record job month-to-month -month over uh, record month-to-month -month job creation. We were enjoying uh, some rather significant reserves and some stability, and we hadn't, to your point, the state of California hadn't raised taxes generally since 2012. People forget that. They, as if, you know, people sort of discovered, oh, hey, what did you do in 2012? Almost a decade ago was that last voter approved increase uh, under the previous administration of income tax. Now, I, we can't solve for uh, President Trump's tax increase in California with the SALT deduction. Mm -hmm. And in their tax increase, Kevin McCarthy, the Republican Party, that promoted a tax increase in states like California. Uh, we're working with Nancy Pelosi now, we're working with Schumer and others to try to address that and had direct conversations with President Biden on that. By the way, it sunsets in a few years, which is good. People, Many people don't know that, but nonetheless, we wanna see movement on that sooner. But look, the economy in this state was not being uh, enjoyed by everybody. And when you talk about pre-existing conditions, it goes to the frame of your question, the richest and the poorest state. And so we talk now in terms of growth and inclusion that businesses can't thrive in a world that's failing. And what we had is a multi-decade reality that was sort of expressing itself, particularly here in the Bay Area, notably 
in terms of our concentrated success, concentrated economic output and entrepreneurial spirit, innovative energy, where you saw those disparities quite rawly, meaning the ultimate manifestation homelessness out in the streets and sidewalks over the last decade, significant increase in the number of people living on the streets and sidewalks. We saw that in terms of this cost of housing, the cost of living broadly, and the issues of economic growth and expansion, creating problems with gentrification. The biggest complaint again, 16 months ago in San Francisco, I can't afford to be here. Too many people want to be here. Mm -hmm. Success was its biggest challenge. And now, of course, we've had to weather through everybody saying, San Francisco's finished, it's over, big cities are, and, you know, I mean, again, I'm old enough to have lived this five or six times in my lifetime. Nonetheless, we do have to address those stubborn problems. And I can assure you this, not only did we enjoy great economic output um, in the last four months and over the last five uh, years prior to this pandemic, but now we're enjoying record surplus. I mean, eat your heart out. There's no other state in the country. We are laying claim to the largest budget surplus in recorded history, American history. It's by the way, north of the 75 plus billion that was advertised. We had another additional $3.9 billion of additional cash above our projections. That's something that we're not really advertising now. It's north of $80 billion. And that doesn't even include the $27 billion of direct relief, direct to the state that came from the American Rescue Plan. So over $100 billion now to invest in addressing these stubborn systemic issues. 12 billion to invest in the issue of homelessness. The largest commitment in our history since Ronald Reagan who stood right in this room in 1967 and began in that infamous first budget of which wonderful, wonderful book, Carl Cannon uh, called Governor uh, wrote about Reagan. You can read all about that first devastating budget that started to rip array that social safety net as it relates to behavioral health in this state. And we're making the biggest commitment in our history to start to rebuild that and address needs for board and care, and provide more opportunities for conservatorships. We're looking to build on Project Home Key, which provided 6,000 housing units in five and a half months mm -hmm. at an average cost per key of less than $150,000. I'll repeat that. Bay Area Council, we've been talking about affordable housing for how many decades? Affordable to whom? not the taxpayers, not to the cities and counties that subsidize it, not at six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars per key to develop it. We're talking 150,000. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about four to five years being generous in talking about four and a half to five months to pull those units into escrow. We're putting billions more in this budget to not double down, but to quadruple down on home key, new strategy, more aggressive interventions. People wanna see things happen now. We're doing the same to clean up the state. Billion and a half dollars to clean up the state. The, the, the roads and uh, into the cities and you know, sides of the median strips and what's happening entrances and exits off the freeways. It's, it's unacceptable, it's too dirty. And $80 million, Caltrans entire state budget two years ago, talk about pre-existing. Two years ago, the statewide budget for litter removal for Caltrain was $80 million, We're putting over a billion and a half dollars to invest in cleaning the state. So we're trying to address those things. Same with unsticking housing. I've signed 15 CEQA bills. I know it's not the, you know, the big one yet, but the fact is we're making progress and we're getting a little smarter, uh, ADUs and some other things. So housing, affordability, tax credits, record investments in tax credits, uh, homelessness across the spectrum, behavioral health, not just issues, again, of uh, dealing with um, you know, more traditional housing, but also underlying reasons people are on the streets and sidewalks, dealing with encampments. We have a targeted encampment strategy, but I wanted to say this in closing, I'm not the mayor of California. In many ways, I wish I was the mayor of California. And I'm saying this with respect. Mm -hmm. We got 58 counties, we got 470 cities. We got to see something in return. Record investments require record results and record accountability. And we're also putting accountability language in this budget, the likes of which we've never seen mm -hmm. in our state to measure success because more is not better, better is better. We're providing record money. It's like a fireworks show at the end. We're putting everything we got out there. We expect to see real results in the next few years. That is so exciting to hear. I mean, I can't tell you how many people will say and businesses will say, you know, I don't mind paying the taxes, but I, we need to see it 
in um, strong public infrastructure and public services. So I think that that is music to our members' ears when we hear that the money is going into um, creating the environment, the climate, the services that, I, that without them, I don't think people in the private sector really understand how they bear the cost, right? And, um, and, and by the way, just because this is important as a, as a private sector guy myself, started right at a coal pe school, pen to paper and part-time employee, Pat Kelly, and uh, was able to grow that business, 21 businesses up and down the state. Uh, issues of entrepreneurialism are a point of passion for me and pride. It's really my identity, not politics in so many ways. It's that entrepreneurial past. But I want to say this as well. Predictability is important too for the business community. And I think this is important to note. Record reserves, not just record surplus. Almost $11 billion were paying down in pension obligations. How many states are using general fund reserves to pay down pension obligations, long-term obligations? 100%, 100% of that wall of debt we inherited a few years back. All of that's now paid off. More resiliency in our budget than any time in history. The question, of course, more reserves. I, I get that. It's, a more, it's an important debate. Uh, but the fact is, we are well positioned to weather a downturn, which is inevitable. No one's naive. At the same time, rewarding not just work, but also rewarding the taxpayers. We're putting $12 billion of the money back in tax rebates, the largest tax rebates in American history. Again, it just these are things you don't read. Sean Hannity's not writing about or talking about these things. $12 billion of tax rebates. Three quarters of tax filers are gonna get a tax rebate. Uh, we are also uh, putting four billion dollars up in small business grants, not loans. Small businesses don't need any more loans, they need grants. We have 5.2 billion to deal with this rent issue and we've got work that we still have to do in the next few hours and the next few days to get uh, uh, a rent deal that works for everybody to extend, but also create opportunities and expectations so we can right the ship. Uh, but $5.2 billion to deal with back rent and to deal with utilities, water, not just electric, electricity. And of course, $2 billion to address the issues of wildfires, which is just off the charts unprecedented. We actually have a real plan, 100 specific strategies that include home hardening, that include unique strategies on prescribed burns and vegetation management, forest management, reforestation, new technologies, new strategies in terms of intervention, uh, pre-positioning assets, 1,399 new, wildfire, new firefighters this year, more hand crews and dozer crews, uh, more bells and whistles, including these Black Hawk helicopters that have night capacity, getting rid of those old Hueys and C-130s and all kinds of satellite technology we didn't have just a couple of years ago, including weather monitoring stations and new integrative strategies working with cities and counties. All of that part and parcel of addressing uh, this new normal that I know Joaquin and others were talking about related to drought, and wildfires, and some of those stresses that all of us are very mindful of. Yeah, uh, that, it, it again, really exciting. It You know, you're able to shift from crisis management to how do we how do we now build for the long term long haul and um, you know as you as you uh, as you think about you know everyone talks about pre and post pandemic any of your priorities change from when you first went into office and kind of what you're thinking about now Did uh, there's a deeper sense of urgency okay. when you pull the band aid off you know just there's a freedom yeah. more intentionality more capacity to understand what we're capable of doing if we put our minds to it we row in the same direction. I'm looking at things that were a decade out, and now I'm saying, no, we can get something done in the next three to five years. Right. I'm looking at things that were three to five years, saying, guys, we can do this in months. Home Key is a perfect example of that. 6,000 housing. First of all, the state had no homeless plan when I got here. None. Non-existent. Didn't exist. There's no strategy. There was no real supports. And Governor Brown's last budget, to his credit, it wasn't, he wasn't enthusiastic about it. It's not an indictment. But the legislature sort of demanded that there be an appropriation to cities and counties, but that was it, it was a few hundred million dollars. Now there's a plan, there's a strategy, there's intentionality, there's accountability, there's a different energy. I've been here 29 months, I haven't been here 29 years, I haven't been here, you know, it, this is 29 months. Uh, and I know all of you are like, oh, Jesus, it feels like this guy's been around a hell of a lot longer than that. And it feels that way, but we're just getting started. So no, we didn't, we didn't take our eye off the ball. I think there's some lazy punditry that, oh, you can't, once you're a mayor, 
you got to juggle things and give me a break. This notion that, well, you can only do one or two things. I think that's just stale 1960s rhetoric from pundits that are dialing it in. You can do a lot of things and you have to do a lot of things because people care about childcare. They care about kids with intellectual disabilities. They care about the dis distinctions on, uh, uh, you know, bipolar disorder versus, you know, issues associated with social isolation and depression. They understand that, you know, the, the unique characteristics of our healthcare delivery system, just ask you, Janet Kaiser, North versus South, and some of those profound disparities and, and how you manage a state as large as ours requires a little bit of dexterity, a little more flexibility. So I'm, I'm more focused on flexibility, but with, again, with an expectation of timelines being brought uh, into the present because none of us have patience anymore. That's uh, yeah. That's certainly all of our all of our sense of you know, of urgency um, and how and we learned how fast things can get done when you put your mind to it. So um, I love that you're bringing that into um, this sort of as we roar roar out of the kind of economic depression that we've been in. Um, you know, I can't help but say you, you, you mentioned, and I completely forgot that we had an entire change in our administration in the White House <laughs> during the pandemic, right? Oh, gosh, that was incredible. <laughs> and so uh, do, you, do you think that California, um, it, how that bodes well for California? Do you think about some of the federal changes, the Biden administration's direction, their priorities? I mean, what more proof points you need there? Council's long been a champion of high-speed rail. I can't make up the last decade and a half on ISP rail, but I can address what we've done differently in the last couple of years to try to get this thing right back on track. Yeah. And we just were able to get the $929 million, the, almost a billion dollars the Trump administration took from us. We've got um, remarkable current Attorney General Hugh Met, and of course, the previous one who sued the administration over 100 uh, plus times. And we're sort of unraveling that, particularly as it relates to low carbon, green growth areas in climate change, 58 plus lawsuits. And, you know, we've been able to unwind those. Just ask Mary Barra, who was suing us with the Trump administration at GM, mm -hmm. and now is coming on board, uh, wanting to meet our mandate for uh, zero emission vehicles by 2035. You're seeing that with Bill Ford and others. And we're now able to do that once again, because the Biden administration is unwinding some of those efforts to eliminate our tailpipe emission standards and our a waiver that, again, Ronald Reagan himself created in 1967 when he started CARB uh, that was codified by another Republican by the name of Nixon with the Clean Air Act in 1970. I say all that to make the point. We used to have a bipartisan frame. I don't know what the hell's happened to this country. That was why Liam Panetta was on tonight, I'm sure. But the bottom line is uh, we have a working partner now, not a sparring partner in the Biden administration. Excellent. Well, I love I love that we can get some of these long term infrastructure projects. Um, we think that we got support for federal funding. That's that's great news. Um, so I want to end with uh, one last um, personal reflection from you. Um, our our folks want to know. Well, first of all, I was going to say just being in this leadership role and and, and you know really thinking about how to take care of the livelihood for 40 million people is just an extraordinary job. Uh, and and we've got a long tail here with the pandemic on the lots of different issues you've raised and things to work on even that were here before the pandemic. And you've got this um, recall election that, you know, you have to take seriously, right? So, you know, despite that, you seem forever optimistic. I just love it. You're, you're optimistic about the future for Californians. You're optimistic about your administration and what we can do together here in the state. So, so what's your secret here for staying so emotionally and physically healthy through all of this and, and for the road ahead? Well, we can ask that to you and so many people uh, that are tuning in. I, I mean, we've, we've learned what we're capable of. Uh, this last year. If we all went into this 15 months ago, knowing what we would have to persevere, I'm not sure uh, many of us would fare as well as I think we have. We, we have remarkable resilience to look in life. We all know this, there's no redo. And so our mindset here is uh, no zero days. And you know, just every day, you've got to grind, get back up and just keep moving forward. Um, and eventually uh, what we practice in private will be recognized in a political sense, at least in public. And so it's just that focus sense of purpose, real passion. Uh, you gotta have a belief uh, and a belief that you can manifest too. And, and that ultimately uh, the facts matter. They're stubborn things that get out there. And look, this recall is very serious. Uh, ask the last governor. 
if I'm recalled, I'll be the second of the last three Democratic governors to be recalled. And I assure you, it won't be the last. They'll be using this as a way and a tool uh, to leverage and as a way and tool uh, to disrupt. And, and you know, this is the, the RNCs behind this and Gingrich and Huckabee kind of brings me back to the 90s a little bit. But, you know, I also have this broad pa Brad Pascal guy running uh, this person, um, you know, that's sort of well known on celebrity circuit uh, and, and her campaign. and. And, you know, we're a couple of wildfires and PSPS protocols. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not naive about this. So we're, we're, we're taking this very seriously, I have for months. And, um, you know, I know there are a lot of people that trusted me that, that, that you know, feel disappointed. It's a tough year. You know, as I say, it's not intellectual for me. I, I have restaurants, bars, I have hotels. I've, I mean, I, I, and I operate in many different parts of the state. I love when people say, well, you don't understand. I intimately understand. I have employees that were with us for decades and, you know, they're, they're not sure they even want to go back to their original jobs. They're just being a little more cautious, not because they're getting $300 supplemental. It's that this last year took a lot out of them. And they're just reflecting on the world they're living in and the world they're about to enter into with a little more caution. And so all of that I'm mindful of, but with that, I'm also, you know, mindful of this, the, just a deep expectation, the best is yet to come. And I've seen it over the course of decades in my life, our capacity to do more and be more and contribute more. And so look, I have a privilege of a lifetime. This is the greatest gift ever conceived. I mean, I am governor, what a gift. And it's a moment in time. And one thing I absolutely am certain of, I'm a future ex-governor, the question is when, but in the, the day, you know, People will turn the page. And so you're given that moment in time. And, and I'm, I'll be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm proud of what this state has accomplished because all your hard work, everybody watching, thank you for your resilience. Those jobs numbers are your jobs numbers. It's your entrepreneurial spirits. So you're willing to take risks, put everything on the line, to have a dream, to take that pen to paper and manifest that dream. That's the greatness of California. I'll just close on this. That greatness didn't go away last year. It didn't disappear to Miami because that Miami mayor is making a bunch of phone calls. Uh, give me a break. That greatness still resides here. Dominant venture capital year last year, 100 plus IPOs so far, so far year to date in California. Bloomberg's number one innovation index. Look at Time Magazine and the most disruptive companies. Look at what's happening across the spectrum, California still dominates. This is a balance sheet unlike any in the world. So look, my mom taught me this, Jan. You're nothing but a mirror of your consistent thoughts. And you want to find what's wrong? You can, you, can, you can spend your whole life there and you can color that in every single day. Or you can start focusing on what's right and build on that. And I, I just, I'm of the opinion, we've beaten ourselves up the last 15 months. It, it's time for us to start dusting off, get our groove back and start focusing on what makes California such a special place and why the California dream is still alive and well and why California's best days are dominantly in front of us and ahead of us, more scientists, more engineers, more researchers, more Nobel laureates, the finest system of higher education on planet earth that has the historic investment, historic budget investment at the UC, CSUs and community colleges. We're reimagining the K through 12 education system, we created a brand new grade TK and ask the moms out there, Ask the dads how important that is to have all your four-year-olds that have quality education, not just quality care in a TK environment and the baby bonds we're doing and the work we're doing with community schools and our expectation setting. It's been tough, but we are committed for the long haul. And I'll tell you, you know, eat your heart out. My friends that moved to Houston, you know, <laughs> with all due respect, you're paying higher taxes. Middle-class families pay higher taxes in Texas than California. Not all of us live at 13.3%. Some of us do, and I'm mindful. That's hard. I get it. But I'm really proud of this state, and I hope you guys are as well. And I'll just close by saying I'm very proud of, you know, Jim and the team, the Bay Area Council, because you know, I feel like I'm a member of the family. Maybe I'll always be your favorite member of the family, but I feel like I'm a member of the family with 20, almost 30 years of yeah. working with all of you, and I look forward to working with you, hopefully, for many many years to come, not just months. Well, well, Governor, I want to say that I'm sure all of our members here today are just so excited because your priorities are right in line with the Bay Area Council's priorities. And we're eager to support and, and partner with this exciting vision that you have for the road ahead. And I just want you to know that whenever 
um, you're, you call my CEO, Greg Adams, he, you know, we open the checkbook. <laughs> so, so we're way, here to support you. We're here to now, support you. <laughs> and by the way, Jim, there were a lot of phone calls this year, trust me. And you know what? The answer was yes. And we didn't even have to ask. And thank you, Kaiser, for, you know, you, uh, look, no one does it better than Kaiser and uh, your philanthropy uh, and your support to our communities, our diverse communities, equity being our North Star is second to none. So thank you, Jenna, for that. And thank you, Greg. And thank you to Kaiser and Kaiser family. And again, Jim, you and the entire Barry Council on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Governor. And, uh, you know, that was it. Uh, I love the passion and, the, and those comments. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things that were discussed. I think mostly positive things today, but that was definitely closing out a great, uh, a great conference on a high and I really appreciate that. And, you know, we're, we all have California in our heart and we're all, we're all going to work really hard. And uh, Texas does have like bigger bugs that fly around and stuff, you know, <laughs> than we do. So they've got something, but I don't know what else they have. Uh, I, 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 I feel for anyone who would actually pick up and move to Texas. Uh, I actually moved to, to lived in Texas before in Houston, before I moved to San Francisco, but I only made it is a true story. I only made it for eight hours. I lived, literally lived there for eight hours and couldn't make it through the night and packed up and left. That's, that was my, uh, you know, and came to San Francisco. That's a true story. So yeah, we're yeah. going to need it. I'm going to put you in a video testimonial role. We're gonna, I like that. I'm saying, I'm, all Greg Abbott does the opposite. And so we, we need to step up our game, time to be more damn competitive. And so I, I appreciate that spirit as an ex Texan where Kanye now is one of our stars. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And we're with you. You know, we want to work together. There's a lot to work on. And uh, this is the time to do it. People are excited. We're coming back. Uh, we're roaring back. And, uh, you know, thank you. You know, you've really been out there. You know, uh, we, we appreciate how hard you're working. And, you know, this is just not easy. You know, anybody who thinks this was like obvious or easy, you know, doesn't understand. And now is now is the time, uh, you know, to really show them. And I think there's a lot to show and a lot to do. And, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're at, I think, at a really good moment. And, I, you know, when people ask me about recall, I, you know, what recall? It's like the worst recall ever. You know, I mean, there's no viability to it. I know you got to fight it. you got to take it seriously. You should. But I think, the po you know, from what we can see, and, what, you know, we talk to a lot of people, you know, people are shrugging their shoulders about this thing and going, you know, it really it doesn't make any sense, uh, you know, to have a recall appear in the in the first place. But certainly, with the largest uh, budget surplus in the history of America, uh, that is really addressing a whole bunch of issues. And it's you know a lot of the things that you talk about are you know they're just all meaningful things. And you know we worked on transitional kindergarten in the beginning, and we were able to extend it to a few months of the year, and now to go to a full year, uh, you know that's just a material change. You know, that in people's lives, period, you know, end of story. So thank you. Thank you so much uh, for working so hard for everybody. And thanks for taking time for this. My honor. Thank you guys for everything you do. And thank you for being a principal part of that surplus, Jim. I'm not naive where that those dollars come from. So many of you tuning in. So grateful. I'm going to get you, you some water taxis. Water taxis coming. You'll see. Thank you. I'm counting on you. I am counting on you. you want to go. From where to where, and we'll get them. Even up in Sacramento, we'll get you water. Yeah, don't Anything. forget Stockton. Stockton's a big part of the Bay, so we want them in the Stockton. It's a whole other great group. Bay area. You got thank it. you, Janet. Thank you. Great job. Thank you, Kaiser. Everybody. Um, thanks, TMG and Accenture, and all the sponsors and all the folks who were part of this. Uh, this is a really important day, and we covered a lot of ground, and I think we ended strong. And really appreciate everybody's participation. Thank you, uh, Rufus. And thank you, Justin, for putting on the show and the people from Zoom, the professional services department, did a really good job. We didn't have any gas today. Nobody disappeared. Uh, you know, everything went transition. It was, it was great. But we don't want to do this too much anymore, Zoom guys. We really want to meet in person. Yeah. So, you know, at least make believe. So let's do something. A California-based company, Zoom. Just another damn proof point of our dominance. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> We're going to fill up some hotel rooms all later this year. That's what we're doing. Thank you, Governor. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Be everybody. safe, uh, and we'll uh, we'll catch you around the corner. Thank you very, very much. Go California. <laughs> Thank you all.